Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. Tronics, I'm Gregory and in this video we are going to take a little look on how transformers work and how we can measure here on LT Spice the magnetizing current of the transformer. Take your coffee and come with me. Well guys, I have here on LT Spice a blocking oscillator very close to the blocking oscillator we studied in the last video that used a vacuum tube. Here on LT Spice I'm using a JFET transistor that works very very similar to a blocking oscillator. Very interesting. Look here at the signal at the grid or at the gate of the JFET. The signals are really really equal to the signals we studied on the vacuum tube blocking oscillator. But here on LD Spice we can measure the magnetizing current generated by the magnetizing inductance of the transformer core. And we already know that here on the blocking oscillator this part here, this section here, the pulse transformer of the blocking oscillator is a very important part of the oscillator where the characteristics primarily the magnetizing inductance of this pulse transformer will be very important important to generate the pulse width and also the spikes of voltage we see here on the oscillator. So this is a very nice example of a very simple circuit that has a very complex behavior because of the transformer. And as I told you on the last video, I really understood how this circuit worked when I began to make a deep study of the transformer behavior. We are very familiarized with the idea of drawing the transformer as two inductors coupled by a coupling factor. In this simulation here, I'm using a coupling factor of unity as this generates better waveforms for the simulation here. But in reality, this coupling factor here will be a bit lower than one. When we model a transformer here on LT Spice, we have two coupled inductors, but when we go to the model of the transformer, we have a much complex circuit like this one we are seeing here. And here on the model, we see that we have inductances, series inductances and parallel inductances. And we also have something we call an ideal transformer. So this section here is an ideal transformer. And this here, all this circuit model, a real transformer that in LT Spice, we define it as two inductors coupled by a coupling factor. So let's first understand guys, what is this ideal transformer here? What is this building block of the model of a transformer? This building block here is actually a component that do not exist in reality. It exists only on the mathematics. It exists only on the analysis of a circuit. And as the symbol of this ideal transformer has inductors inside, this leads us to a confusion. When we look to this ideal model here, we understand that it has inductance because we are seeing inductors drawn here. But an ideal transformer, this idealized model of a transformer will not store charge. So actually we don't have any inductive behavior inside the ideal transformer. The ideal transformer is a mathematical tool that we use that describes the coupling between the secondary side with the primary side. We have an impedance looking to this side here, Z primary, and we have an impedance looking to the other side here, Z secondary. And the ideal transformer is this block here that relates the currents of the secondary with the current of the primary and the voltage of the secondary with the voltage of the primary. So the ideal transformer is only a mathematical tool we use to couple the two parts of the circuit. We have the primary side and the secondary side and we need to create a mathematical relation between them. So we know that the voltage here V2 and the voltage here, let's call it V primary, V2 equals V primary times the relation of turns 
the turn relation of the transformer and we also define that the primary current, E primary and the secondary current are related by the inverse of the turns ratio. We know that the side that has more turns will have higher voltage and at the same time the side of the transformer that has higher number of turns will have a lower current. And these of course, these two equations, we will also define the impedance relation because as the voltage increases with the turn ratio and as the current decreases with the turn ratio it becomes very clear that the secondary impedance and the primary impedance are related secondary equals the turn ratio squared times the impedance of the primary. This makes sense because the voltage is increased by the turns ratio, current is decreased by the turns ratio, so the turns ratio has a square relation to the impedances of both sides. And this is the ideal part of a transformer, this part here that only relates current and voltage between the two sides. But we know that when we go to a real circuit like this one here, the core of the transformer is storing energy in the form of magnetic flux. When we say that we have magnetic flux on the core of the transformer, we are saying that we are storing energy on the core of the transformer. But the ideal transformer, it's called a transformer because, because it's only transforming the impedances between the two sides. This is why it's called a transformer. It is not storing energy. There's no energy storing part in a transformer. The transformer is this idealized component that transforms impedance between the two sides. So when we are dealing with a real transformer, we need to have a more complete model. And this is when we have the complete model of a real transformer. Look at this. On a real transformer, we have the ideal part that is transforming the impedances between the secondary side and the primary side. But we also need to have an inductive part that is modeling the magnetizing inductance that is actually modeling the storing of energy as magnetic flux on the core of the transformer. This is the magnetizing inductance, is this real inductor here that appears in parallel with one of the sides of the transformer. Usually we use it on the primary side and we also models the leakage inductance. What is the leakage inductance? The leakage inductance is the inductance that appears in series with the leads of the transformer because we don't have a perfect coupling between the two coils. Remember, a real transformer like this one here is made by two coupled inductors. We have a core, the primary inductor and the secondary inductor that are magnetically coupled by the core. We are coupling energy because the magnetic flux lines of the primary generated by the primary pass through the secondary winding. This is the magnetic coupling. And it makes sense to imagine that not all the primary magnetic flux lines will couple to the secondary. Some of the magnetic lines will not be coupled. Like in this draw here, we can imagine like these lines here will not be coupled to the secondary. So not all the perturbations that happens in the currents or the voltage on the primary will generate perturbations of voltage or current on the secondary. So it makes sense to understand that a real transformer will deviate a little from an ideal transformer because all the magnetic flux lines that are not coupled to the other coil will behave like self-inductance, will behave like a normal inductor. This is why on the model we have series inductors that are modeling the leakage inductance. We see here that part of the transformer is coupled and some of the magnetic lines will not couple to the secondary part here. This is very intuitive. Part of the inductor is not coupled and this part will behave like a series inductive energy storing element 
in series with the output and in series with the input. And of course, guys, as this box here is an ideal component, is the ideal transformer, it's only a mathematical tool we use to relate the impedance of the secondary side to the primary side. Of course, we can transfer this leakage inductance from the secondary to the primary. We can put it here if we transform the impedance of the series inductor by the relation of the transformer. And we see it here. In this part here, we have the leakage of the primary, the magnetizing inductance of the transformer that's modeling all the current needed to sustain the magnetic flux on the core and the leakage inductance is represented here by the inductance times the relation of the transformer square and the ideal part of the transformer is here on the output. This model here will behave exactly equal as this one here and we see that here on LT Spice we are using the two inductors coupled by a coupling factor here a coupling factor of one what means a coupling factor of one it means that we are saying to LT Spice that we don't have any leakage inductance so we don't have this series part here we only have a perfect coupling pair of inductors. So when we use a coupling factor of one, we are not creating an ideal transformer. We are creating a perfect transformer. A perfect transformer has magnetizing inductance, but it will not have leakage inductance. So this means that actually we have a transformer without primary leakage inductance and without secondary leakage inductance but we still have the primary magnetizing inductance that sustain the magnetic flux on the core, that sustain the energy transferring between the primary and the secondary. And this can lead to a lot of confusion because when people put a unitary coupling factor here, some people think that they are generating an ideal transformer on LT Spice and they are not. This transformer here will behave as a perfect transformer with no leakage inductance, but with the magnetizing inductance of the transformer. So if an ideal transformer is only coupling two parts of the circuit, the secondary and the primary side, and let's imagine that the two sides here are one by one coupling ratio, the same amount of turns on the primary and on the secondary, it's very clear that all the energy that is entering the primary is leaving the secondary because we are not starting energy on the ideal part of the transformer. This is very clear. Let's imagine that you have a perfect transformer without leakage inductance. But this is not what we have here on LT Spice. Remember that we still have magnetizing inductance here. So this transformer here stores energy. So part of the current that enters here the transformer is going to the magnetizing inductance. The current splits here here through the magnetizing inductance, storing energy to the core and going directly to the ideal transformer going to the other side here. So current entering the transformer here will not be leaving the transformer here because part of the energy, part of the current will be entering the magnetizing inductance that we are not seeing on this model here. Part of the current will be used to store energy on the core of the transformer. And how can we take a look? How can we measure? How can we see this current, the magnetizing current on LT Spice? This is very simple. As on the secondary here, the current flows in opposite direction than in the primary. We can see that on the primary by convention, the current enters the dot and it leaves the dot on the secondary. If we subtract the input current from the output current, we will be measuring the difference of current and this difference we know 
that is actually entering the magnetizing inductance of the transformer. But as the secondary has an opposite direction, we actually need to add the two. Will be the current going on the primary plus the current leaving the secondary because actually the secondary current is negative so we are actually subtracting this current from this current here and in this way we know how much current is being used to store energy on the transformer core and this is exactly what i did here guys we can see that here i added the two to make more sense on this circuit here i added negative here to make it a positive signal so it makes more sense on this circuit here but actually i am adding the current on the secondary to the current on the primary and we can see that here we are measuring the magnetizing current of this transformer here and this is different take a look on this this is different than the current that is going into the primary look here at the current going into the primary and this of course is different than the current leaving the secondary look at this this is very very interesting we have the primary current and the secondary current here and something is missing here because the, it, it doesn't match if we think that this is an ideal transformer this current waveform will not make sense because they are very very different and this is because we have the magnetizing inductance that is storing energy inside the transformer core and this current here is plotted here we now see that it makes total sense we can actually invert this to make the direction more clear here more, more easy to see we see that on the primary we have a very constant current and on the secondary the current is decreasing and why the current is decreasing because the magnetizing inductance of the transformer is stealing current from the secondary. Look at this. If we apply a constant voltage here, V, we have a constant voltage over the magnetizing inductance. And if you apply a constant voltage over an inductor, we have a ramp of current. Okay? So the current here is increasing more and more. And we see it here exactly. And as the current here increases even more, it's going to steal the current that would be flowing inside the ideal transformer. So this current here is less and less. And this current here is more and more. And we see this exact behavior here on LT Spice. Look, as the magnetized current is increasing, the secondary current is decreasing while the input current is constant and we see here exactly the curves we saw on the last video of the channel when we talked about the blocking oscillator well guys and this is how a transformer works and how we can plot the magnetizing current here on LT Spice. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and consider supporting the channel, becoming a patron link on the description. I see you on the next video of Autotronics.